Hi, so I wanted to conclude with option three and just the results from there. Um, so essentially, um, you know, what we spoke about option three is that it all runs in uh, essentially the IDE. Uh, so we are watching code and as the code changes, we generate embeddings. Um, and this embeddings are generated by using a, a transformer model within, uh, within uh, the IDE in JavaScript. Uh, so in order to do that, we're using the Onyx runtime. And then once that's done, we would store uh, it in a custom in-memory store and look up that store while querying. So essentially when the customer types, you know, give me a logging framework, we search that in uh, in Voy, uh, get the results back and then send it to AI Gateway for the actual chat, right? Uh, so I wanted to quickly show you what that could look like. Um, so the first thing I did was I took an existing model. So I couldn't make it work with the original model that I had uh, for code embedding because that was not supported. Um, uh, so although it's a PyTorch model, for some reason it wasn't getting converted. Uh, but I used this other uh, sentence uh, model um, called bird-based multilingual case. And I was able to use that and convert that uh, effectively to um, uh, actually, instead of that one, I actually used a different model called uh, this one, flag sentence emb embeddings, which is basically a code search. Um, and, and I was able to convert that to Onyx format, which basically means that it, it is kind of a cross-functional format and can work across different languages and things like that. So I was able to convert that model to a quantized Onyx format model. And then once that's in there, um, I was, uh, you know, essentially, uh, I'm then able to call that from JavaScript. So let me just show you the JavaScript code. Um, uh, it, it's quite simple in the sense, all I'm doing is really reading the files uh, from the directory, using tree setter to parse uh, all the symbols from them. So I extract all the functions and classes and things like that. Uh, and then I just generate embeddings. And this embeddings are generated within JavaScript itself. Um, and the way that I'm doing that is I'm um, using transformer.js, uh, importing uh, that particular model, a code search model that I spoke about, uh, generating embeddings for that. Uh, getting the uh, tensor back and then just responding with that. Um, so essentially, uh, so effectively, I'm able to generate this embeddings.json file, which is a large file, but basically it contains information about the file. Uh, it contains the function that's there, for example, here, and the embeddings. Uh, and because it's, it's such a large file, it's not going to be able to parse in the, in the IDE. Um, but but th that's basically it. And then once that embeddings or JSON is generated, um, uh, you can see that uh, once an embedding or JSON is embedded, I'm able to use VOI uh, and and search. So VOI is an uh, in-memory uh, embedding store. So it essentially lets you it's an in-memory vector store. Lets you store and search for vectors. Um, and able to use VOI to actually uh, store those vectors and then just search for them. Uh, so the results of that I will show you is here, where I loaded the uh, downloaded the embedding store, loaded the vectors in, and then searched. Now um, it could be because of the uh, vector, um, uh, the um, uh, the the model I used for embeddings wasn't as good as the previous one, um, and therefore it obviously. Um, uh, it, it obviously did not get me the best results as compared to last time, where it is able to correctly identify for this repository that Zap is the logging example here. It's got some kind of vague, vague examples that it's picked up, um, but but I, I think that's m mainly due to the model. Um, uh, so so you know I don't think that should factor into our results here, but uh, essentially it does take. So I did um, I did um, uh, try to embed a huge repository. Uh, and so this is all in JavaScript. And if you roughly see, um, the one I did was uh, the GitLab KTS agent directory. And what you'll see is that it takes roughly, um, uh, it, it took roughly, uh, let's say four minutes or so to embed. So it is actually surprisingly faster than Python. Um, in this case, uh, maybe because it's a, it's a different model. Um, and uh, it, it, it took four minutes to generate the embeddings. Now, um, as Mikula has, has correctly stated, like this wouldn't be very helpful for chat, uh, chat in the, um, on the web, uh, you know, really in the app, uh, because, you know, it'll take four minutes to generate the embeddings for a particular uh, repository, and that's probably too long. Um, 
And so instead, uh, it's probably best to pre-create the embeddings within GitLab somewhere and then store them so that we can access them and download them and access them later. So, um, uh, but this, this will work for uh, if you were to implement this for on Web IDE or even on um, uh, or, or even on the uh, you know the desktop extension. Thank you.